Hi, I'm Jeremy Quitner, staff writer for Inc. Magazine, talking today with Karen Mills, the former head of the Small Business Administration and currently a fellow at Harvard University. How broad-based do you think the economic recovery is today and the role that small businesses are playing in that? Well, I'm very glad that you want to talk about this because small business really got crushed in the recession. They got hit so hard and the recovery was quite slow. Small businesses just couldn't get their feet under them. When the banking market froze, they just couldn't get a loan. And at the time, as you know, I was running the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and we had to really take some bold action to get banks back to lending using the SBA guarantee. And then slowly the, the banks were able to get credit, but then there wasn't much business. Right now, we're seeing some signs of life. And so it's a really appropriate question to say, which segments of small business land are perking up and thriving? Well, it seems to me that uh, there's this wonderful efflorescence going on in technology where uh, we read about these incredible valuations of tech companies in Silicon Valley. So is there a discrepancy that you would see in your research between these fast growing tech companies that everybody's paying attention to and the mom and pop Main Street businesses? Turns out that all small businesses are not the same and that some do better in different times and in different ways. Each one is actually important to the economy. So it's a good thing the tech companies are doing well. We can worry about bubbles. It's a very good thing, I think, for the economy in general that innovation is taking place. We know that a very, very small number of high growth companies who are innovative drive our economy and they end up creating a significant number of the total jobs as they get to be the big players. So we have to like that and keep that going. Although not just in the software technology pieces, we need to make sure that happens in manufacturing and in innovation and other sort of non high tech areas because that actually creates more robust jobs. It's happening in energy for instance now. So I'm just wondering, what are some of the ways, what are some of the chief ideas that you guys have come up with to continue driving innovation in some of these other sectors? Economic policy in this country is now different because we have to incentivize the growth of a brand new kind of business, these entrepreneurial companies. In the old days, if you wanted to create new jobs in Seattle, you know, you would call up Boeing and say, I'm going to give you a tax incentive. How about you open another manufacturing plant? And between, you know, one company and the government, you would get economic growth that would benefit the whole state because one job in manufacturing creates multiple jobs on Main Street. Today, you're not dealing with one entrepreneur, you're dealing with many. So you have to create a whole ecosystem. That's why we have accelerators and clusters and new organizations that help technology emerge from universities and connect and, and new sources of capital. Those ecosystems require different kinds of public policy. They require the mayor or the governor or the federal government to do new things. And that's what we started to do over the, the five years that I was in Washington, and it's really begun to catch hold.